Good evening guys and welcome to today's video where I'm doing another Corbett Maths 5 a day um, of those challenges from January the 1st and it's the higher tier plus so it's looking at grade 6 and 7 and possibly even grade 8 material uh, in this section and grade 9 okay right guys this video was recorded on Sunday the 25th of July 2021 Right, guys, so a, 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 a slightly different start to the video. So I've put some like, starter questions here for like foundation level students, and so probably for high level students. So feel free to have a go at these questions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put the answers in the final slide actually. So please do keep watching. Okay, feel free to obviously pause the video. Okay, and try these questions, and then obviously um. Yeah, if if it's just these questions that you are interested in, then skip to the end, you know, once you finish answering the questions, to find out what the answers to this section is. Okay, but in today's video, we're going to be looking at the higher tier questions for all exam boards and all specifications for AQA, Edexcel, OCR, WJC, IGC, and all other exam boards. Okay, and lastly, guys, before I start, if you found this video useful, please hit that subscribe button and um, press the like button button and also press the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on further videos and further uploads okay and comment below on topic requests for gc uh, or key stage three or a uh, a level maths okay right guys okay so this is our first question guys that i've seen okay so It says question four uh, is the, the um, function translations. It says shown below is a graph of f of x. Sketch the function f of x plus one. Now f of x plus one means that it is a translation vector. So it's moving one place to the left. So it's going in this direction. So all the coordinates, okay, the, the x coordinates move um, one to the left. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. So it's currently on 0, minus 1. So that's the only point that we've been given. Okay, it doesn't cross these x-axis at a whole number. So it was hard to obviously define what that meant. Okay, so moving that to the left here means that this new point is going to be 1, minus 1. Okay, so everything's moved one place to the left. So f of x plus 1 means a translation in the x direction of one unit to the left okay and all the x coordinates move one one um become one smaller essentially and the y coordinates stay the same okay so f of x plus one is a translation of one to the left guys okay so make sure that you are happy with your your types of transformation for obviously uh, enlargement rotation um translation and reflection okay so uh, i'm I, i've got some videos here where, where, where i've covered the types of transformations um for functions for translation for stretch yeah for um things like that okay so feel free to check it out right guys question number one okay so, so it's going back to the prove 2n plus 2 all squared minus 2n plus 1 is always odd so it's expanding this bracket so 2n plus 2 all squared actually so it's 2n plus what 2 times 2n plus 2 subtract 2n and then minus 1, okay, because I've got like an invisible 1 here, minus 1 times 2n is minus 2n, and minus 1 times positive 1 is this, so expanding this guys, I'm going to get 4n squared plus 4n plus 4n plus 4, Okay, so expanding that bracket, so 2n times 2n is 4n squared, 2n times positive 2 is positive 4n, plus 2 times 2n is positive 4n, and plus 2 times plus 2 is positive 4. Okay, and then I'm going to minus 2n minus 1. Okay, so simplifying this, I'm going to get 8n, 6n, okay, and then I'm going to get plus 4 plus 3. So I'm going to get 4n squared plus 8n plus 3. Now what I can do here is just factor out a 2 from the first two brackets. So I'm going to have 2 lots of 2n squared plus 4n 
brackets closed plus three now this plus three here so this is always going to give me a even function okay so it's, Im Im imagine it is in the form here 2n plus 3. Now I know that 2n plus 3 here is, is, is going to be odd for all the values of n. So this first part is going to be even and when I add a odd number at the end it's always going to give me an a odd number. 2n plus 3 is in the same form as 2n plus 1. Okay so it's so it's two lots of n. Okay so it's two lots of this plus a number so it's in this form now 2n plus 1 is always an odd number 2n is an even number 2n plus 1 is, is always an odd number okay so remember that so what i've done here is factor out uh, a, a even number from this okay so it, it doesn't have to be fully factorized and this is the key guys this is the, the only time in maths here where it doesn't where, where the function or the terms doesn't have to be fully factorized as long as it's in the form of an odd um, number or a even number if that makes sense so it has to be in the form of 2n or 2n plus 1 okay so that's why uh, it, it doesn't really matter that, that that i've got an n squared here and an n and a 2 and a 4 it doesn't really matter but the idea was is that 2 bracket 2n squared plus 4n brackets so that's going to always be even because it's times by 2 at the front and then adding that plus 3 well it's same as adding a number at the end will give me a odd number so adding 3 well 3 is odd even add odd is always odd okay because 2n plus uh, 2n plus 2n plus 1 is going to be 4n plus 1 which is always going to be odd okay because 4n is even and then plus 1 makes it an odd okay so i hope that actually made sense guys question number five rationalizing the denominator three plus root two over root two now this just means multiplying it by something to get rid of the root two on the denominator okay so we don't want a root two on the bottom so i'm going to multiply this by one which is the same as saying root two over root two Okay, so root 2 over root 2 is just 1, okay, and it's going to become clear in a moment of what I have times by root 2 over root 2, okay. So on the top, 3 times root 2 is 3 root 2, and root 2 times root, um, root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2, okay, root 2 times 2 is going to be 2, so I'm going to have 3 root 2 plus 2 over 2, so it's the same as saying 2 plus... 3 root 2 over 2, which I can just simplify, so I'm going to have 1 plus 3 root 2 over 2, and now that is now rationalised, because there is not a third on the bottom, so there is not a root 2 on my denominator, so therefore it is rationalised, so it's always multiplied by the, essentially by, by the same as the bottom of this root here, if that makes sense, so whatever that, that root is, I'm, I'm going to times it by that same root again, over the same root, okay, in my answers, okay, so times it by root 2, remember that root 2 times root 2 is the square root of 2 times 2, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So root a times root a is always going to give me just a. Okay, so remember that, guys. It's a very, very, very important rule in maths. Okay, so rule of thirds. Root a times root a is always going to give me a. So root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2. Okay, so root 2 times root 2 is equal to 2. Right, guys, okay, so we've got last few questions now. Uh, question 3, composite functions f of x equals x, 3, 3x plus 2, and g of x is 3x plus g of x so f of x is 3x plus 2 and g of x is um is um x squared find f g of x well it's a function of a function so it's f of g of x now g of x is x squared so it's applying f here so it's essentially replacing x with x squared into this function so i'm going to get three brackets x squared 
bracket plus 2. So it's the same as saying 3x squared plus 2, essentially. Yeah. Okay, so that is my answer for the first part. So it's function of a function. So it's, so it's starting with the g function and then working your way um, in the left direction. So start with the g function and then apply f. If it was g of f of x, you'd start with f and then apply g essentially. Okay, so if you're interested, g f of x would look something like this. So we would apply g to 3x plus 2. Okay, so it would be 3x plus 2 all squared okay because applying g to something squares the function so it's replacing x with 3x plus 2 but obviously it's in a bracket so it's going to be squared okay right guys okay so part b okay g f of 5 well that well, well that's actually nice and easy g f of 5 actually so putting 5 into here i'm going to get 3 times 5 plus 2 all squared well 3 times 5 is 15 add 2 is 17 17 all squared gives me 289 so sorry about that it wasn't very clear um So 17 squared is 17 times 17, which is 289. So the answer for that question is 289, guys. Okay, so it's applying G of F of 5. Okay, so subbing in. So we so we so we worked out what G F of X was. It's taking the function F, which is 3x plus 2, and then applying G to it. So replacing X with 3x plus 2, and then I get 3 x plus 2 all squared remember that is 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2 so i'm going to have 3 times 5 plus 2 all squared i'm um, using bid mass 3 times 5 is 15 and then add 2 is 17 17 all squared is 289 17 times 17 is 289 Right guys, last part. So here are the answers to the starter slides. So feel free to comment below on what um, you, uh, so it was out of five, wasn't it? So one, two, three, four, five. So comment below, it, yeah, if 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 you are able to, and let me know what 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 your mark was out of five on the starter questions when you marked your answers. Okay, so twenty percent, so ten percent means divided by ten, which is one hundred and twenty times by two is two forty. Okay. Number two, so probability of getting a three on a ten-sided dice is three out of ten. Prob the, prob uh, the probability of getting a number less than four is three out of ten. So it's three, two, one. Okay, so three out of ten. The probability of getting a square number, well, square number is one, four, nine. So it's going to be three out of ten again. Okay, and the last one it is a substitution. 3a plus 2c a is 4c is 2 remember that 3a means 3 times a and 2c means 2 times c so 3 times 4 plus 2 times negative 2 gives me 12 plus minus 4 which is 12 minus 4 which is 8 okay so these are the answers to the starter slide so guys i hope it made sense okay uh, any questions any queries drop it in the comment section feel free to let me know about your mark out of five so i can take it as like feedback on how to improve my videos here when i explain um certain questions but i thought i'd make it a bit different by putting some starter questions in there for you, for you guys to, to, to actually take ownership of the video and have a go at some questions okay um i hope you find it useful like i said in the beginning please like like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, click that bell icon so you don't miss out on further videos. Okay, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.